Next guest is bullish on the markets. I'm not sure whether she plugged in what should I do today in the <laughs> chat GPT. Sylvia Jablonski, CEO and CIO of Defiance ETFs. Do you feel like maybe we're ripe for, for a 10% correction like Mike Wilson, Sylvia? Good morning, Joe. I, I'm not looking for a 10% correction. You know, I, I like the analogy of, uh, of, of don't, you know, don't let your babies grow up to be strategists. It's, no. it's more of a compass. Yeah, so I think it's a compass. I think we're due for a pullback. You know, the markets are really melting up, but pullbacks are also opportunities to come into the market. You have six trillion sitting on the sidelines or sitting in, you know, those 5% money markets. The market's doing a lot better than that this year, 17% on, on SPX, you know, over 20% on NASDAQ. So I think pullbacks are only a good thing if you have cash on the side. Guidelines. And if you're in it for the long run, you know, just don't look at your account for those couple of days. Stay the course. I think a pullback is healthy at this stage. The, we were just talking about AI and, and the build out for hardware obviously is great. But w what about all the the second derivative, third derivative plays on AI? Can, can you do that? They're cheaper, but they may be way uh, into the future, the payoff. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're a lot cheaper and they are into the future. So I, I think you can look at it a few ways. You know, if you look at ETFs in this space, for example, you get those large cap names like NVIDIA that are actually leading this, this cause right now and you're getting that performance. But you have those smaller names in some of those types of products like the Ion Qs and the D Waves that work in supercomputing and quantum computing. And, you know, to the point you made before, right now we're, we're maybe writing college papers and, you know, looking things up for fun. But eventually this turns into data processing, this turns into data analysis and, and companies like Eli Lilly, for example, can get better data, better outcomes on their trials and things like this and have more efficiency in drugs, more efficiency in some of the research that they do, disease curing. And so I think there's a huge runway for AI that is highly productive and highly beneficial for society as well in the future. Um, it, it's going to impact driverless cars, aerospace and defense. And yeah, we're in the first inning here. You are uh, one of the, the individual names you talk about is MicroStrategy is kind of a, a crypto yeah. play. And we have had a recent dip in Bitcoin. Do you think, well, number one, talk about that, uh, that recommendation, but also does the, the dip in crypto indicate anything to you? Uh, about what might happen to the NASDAQ, because they've been pretty highly correlated. Katie Stockton was talking about that yesterday. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, crypto and, and NASDAQ end up being highly correlated for the sake of their both risk on and risk assets. And, and, you know, they have moved in tandem through different parts of the year. But there are periods of time where they have diverged, actually. So we think, you know, the crypto sell off, the news that we're getting on this is this is, you know, some of some of it is the German government. Some of this is the FTX settlement and things like this. But overall, the long term case for Bitcoin remains intact. And so, you know, if you believe that there's a long term case in Bitcoin and, you, you know, you've seen that pull back in recent weeks, MicroStrategy has also pulled back, you know, about six percent just in the last couple of days or so. And I think with that, you, you have a little bit of an AI play there. It is a data visualization business intelligence company, right? So you play with that, you get a little bit of a hedge, but they are arguably also a crypto company. And now with crypto down, you know, we talk about buying on dips. This is a good dip to think about, and that's a stock to, to participate, participate in both of those themes. What, what's your thesis on, on healthcare? That, that's a place where people might end up uh, if they get tired of tech? Yeah, I think healthcare is a good one. You know, you look at these companies like Eli, Eli Lilly, for example, where they have the weight loss drugs. We all know that that's just been a, a massive phenomenon in the market this year and highly profitable. But they also have a big pipeline of drugs. They have diabetes drugs, immunology, cancer research, and, and healthcare companies overall. You know, the environment, aging baby boomers is, is sort of ripe for that space to continue to grow. They pay a nice dividend and they tend to be defensive, right? So if we get that Mike Wilson pullback, you want to be somewhere where. Um, you have less of an impact on on market corrections and healthcare is a good place for that. So I, I do like those names in, in, in that space, particularly Eli Lilly. So do you at times would you recommend you you recommending copper and uranium? Do you, do you think people? Yeah. How would people do that? That, that typically just buy stocks. Uh, buy an ETF is the best way to do it. You have you have 
you know, single levered ETFs on both copper and uranium, and you have leveraged ETFs on, on uranium. And the reason I like those plays, I'm just trying to get creative and think outside of the box in terms of, you know, if we think that AI is the biggest innovation of our time, well, things like copper and uranium will, will play there. You know, we, we need additional energy sources. And then on top of that, you have to have, but what if that doesn't work out? What else is there? You know, you have a shortage of, of supply for, for both copper and uranium. You have um, bans on Russian imports for uranium you know, in increasing geopolitical uh, tensions and things like this. So there are a couple of factors that make them interesting places to, to diversify um, assets to. And again, they're kind of down on a pullback here for the last couple of weeks or so. So it could be a buy on a dip opportunity, particularly for uranium.